Welcome to this week's episode of The Better Half. I'm Kinder D. St. Aubin, and this is Katie Hartley. And today we're going to take a look back at some of the things that have been going on this week. And one of the big stories in the NFL is locally right here in Arizona, the Cardinals signing Chester Taylor uh, as a running back. He was, of course, released from the Chicago Bears last weekend. Um, Chester Taylor getting up there in years. He's going to be 32 later this month. Um, he's been in the NFL for 10 years. So what do you think, Kendra? Thumbs up, thumbs down? I think it's a thumbs up because, first of all, I think they needed another solid running back. I just don't know that Beanie Wells is going to hold up. He's had some injuries in the past before. And then also, that's just a lot to expect. And LaRod Stevens Howling, he's a little guy more for special teams in certain situations, mm -hmm. not a guy that's going to run it up the middle. And then Alfonso Smith, he didn't even get much time last year, but they're kind of relying on him. So I like Chester Taylor. And, of course, I'm going to go back to his days with the Vikings. I liked him with the Vikings. He's a great third down back, but I think he could be used for, you know, any down, really. And I think if Beanie Wells mm -hmm. isn't doing his job, I think wasn't on my look to him. And how do you think he's going to fit into the culture in Arizona um, under Coach Ken Wisenheim? Well, I think, first of all, the fact that he's a veteran. I think he's been in the league 10 years. I know he's 32. He's getting up there in age. But I think just that, he'll have the versatility to kind of adapt. It's a good locker room, too. I mean, I've heard a lot of guys, look at the guys that have come in this year, and it doesn't seem like they've had any issues as far as chemistry fitting right in. Right, and we do know that he has a lot of experience. He's still one of four active running backs in the NFL with more than 4,000 yards rushing and more than 2,000 yards receiving. So we might even see him getting catching some balls from Kevin Cobb. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's going to be huge, and I think it's a great pickup, and he should be starting to practice this week. Yep, and he will be, uh, of course, available for the game um, on September 11th here at University of Phoenix Stadium. So let's move on to some news in college football. Have you seen these new uniforms from Maryland yet? Well, first of all, if you watched you the game, you couldn't have missed them. <laughs> and if you didn't even watch the game, if you were on Twitter, you knew about them. And that's how yep. I found out about them because I wasn't watching the game yep. at that time. And all of a sudden I looked at Twitter. It was blowing up with these hideous Maryland uniforms, not to mention their shoes. But it's not <laughs> just their jerseys. It's not just their helmets. It's their shoes. It's everything. I just mm -hmm. think these uniforms are going overboard. And you're, we're talking more about the uniforms than we are about the teams and their play. Exactly. And I looked up some of those tweets. I wrote them down mm -hmm. from this past weekend from the game. Um, Chad Ocho Cinco likes the uniforms. He said anything, Shocking. anything different from the norm is cool. LeBron James, on the other hand, he disagrees. He says, oh gosh, Maryland uniforms, and he uses the hashtag ew. Well, first of all, I think it's funny that even all these guys even have an opinion on it, really. <laughs> I mean, but now with Twitter, we can expect just about anything. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Oregon. I'm not a fan of TCU's shiny thing that they have going on. I mean, all of them, I think, is a distraction. I love the plain, simple, yep. old school uniforms in every sport, basketball, baseball, football, you name it. And I, I'd like to see a little bit of diversity in this. I'm OK with teams taking some chances, trying some different things with the uniforms. I think this one, it's a little bit much. I think part of it was designed from the flag, the, the flag of Maryland. So sure. I'm OK with them trying some different stuff, but this one's pretty ugly. <laughs> well, within the old uniform, it's competing against itself. Like yeah. the helmet's competing with the jerseys, competing with the shoes. So it just mm -hmm. seems like it's a lot going on. And locally here in college football, we had a lot of action this weekend. Of course, U of A and Arizona State having their first games of the season, both teams winning. However, the competition this weekend, maybe not um, quite so competitive, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was pretty weak. I mean, I know they have to schedule some of these games, you know, and it probably helps their confidence, especially kind of get their feet under them. But after this coming weekend, we are going to have a much clearer picture of who ASU and U of A really are with them playing Missouri and Oklahoma State. Do you think that Arizona State deserves to be ranked right now? I do not think they deserve to be ranked in the top 25. I think they're completely overrated. That's just my personal opinion. And if they lose Brock Osweiler, they are really in trouble because after that, it's pretty much four freshman quarterbacks, including a red shirt. So I don't know. I'm not a fan. How about you, though, with the Wildcats? Well, I'm obviously a little biased since I am a Wildcat alumni, but I like the way that U of A is playing this year. Um, I know that they've defensively is what I'm worried about. Um, but I also kind of feel the same way with ASU. You know, their offense it is high-powered this year, but defensively both of these teams are going to struggle. So they're going to be able to put points on the board, but it's going to be holding that other team back that I'm most concerned about. I can't wait to see how they match up against Oklahoma State this weekend. Um, so we'll see. I think you're right, though. We'll, we'll see who these teams really are after this weekend. I think it's going to be really interesting. And hopefully just two really great games, because I think regardless of who you're a fan of in this state, you like to see Arizona teams do well, mm -hmm. especially with the new Pac-12 and the Pac-12 South. So 
it's going to be interesting. Yep, and hopefully we'll get to talk about that uh, next week on The Better Half. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us. Until next week, you can follow Kendra on Twitter at Kendra620. Follow me on Twitter at FunKady620. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week on The Better Half. Yeah. <laughs>